Hey, welcome once again, CISSP wannabes, Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where pretty much every single day I'm going to come at you with two questions to help you as you prepare for your CISSP exam. And let's do number one. All right, my first question for you today is, you have determined that your web application is not doing appropriate input validation. From the answer choices here, what I want to know from you is which of these is the most, most likely consequence of that? Click on pause, give it some thought. Remember you're choosing the most likely, and then when you're ready, click play, and we can break it all down. Okay, now this question arguably has two answers, okay? But in the, in the truest sense of how the CISSP exam tends to work, they're gonna ask you things about which is the least likely or which is the most likely or what's most important or least important kind of stuff. So even though there is absolutely more than one correct answer, only one of them is the most likely answer um, for this particular scenario. So the answer choices really come down to a toss up between two different options. The first of which is cross-site scripting and the other one is SQL injection. Now, if you look at the frequency of different types of attacks that occur for web applications on the internet, um, injection-based attacks with SQL injection being predominant on the list are, at least according to OWASP, the most frequently occurring types of vulnerabilities that we're going to encounter. Now, don't get me wrong, cross-site scripting is not too far behind, but if you had to pick one versus the other in the context of this question of one being more likely to occur, then I would go with SQL injection. But uh, certainly SQL injection and uh, cross-site scripting are both likely outcomes of inappropriate input validation. Now, I don't want you to think even for a moment that input validation is the sole mechanism for preventing those things from happening. There's actually a whole variety of techniques that are involved in that. And I put a link in the description down below if you want to get more involved in your reading on understanding exactly what needs to be done in order to better mitigate these different types of attacks. But suffice to say, input validation is one of the things that you would do, but it is not the primary thing that you would do in order to avoid it. But you're asking for trouble if you're not doing good input validation to begin with. All right, well, let's do question number two. Question number two is, which of these following answer choices is one of the shortcomings of anomaly-based intrusion detection systems? So I want you to give those a thought. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play, and we can go on and talk it through. All right, first item on the list says that anomaly-based systems require regular, regular updates or signature updates to the signature database. Um, no, that's actually not true. That's a characteristic of knowledge-based intrusion detection systems, not of anomaly-based intrusion detection systems, or uh, behavior-based is what they're also called. So that first choice is not correct. Second option is that you get a high number of false positives. This is absolutely the right answer. When you're dealing with anomaly-based or behavior-based intrusion detection techniques, they tend to look at their definition of what normal is on the network. And they determine what normal is by learning, by looking at what's going on in the network. Well, changes in your network can suddenly go in and cause an event to fire off saying, hey, something's potentially wrong here, you need to go and investigate it, when in reality it's just a change from what normal is. Now, in some cases, that change from what normal is may actually be a legitimate concern, maybe something that's actually worthy of spending time on. So take, for example, you have a node that, say, doesn't generate a bunch of um, common example, a bunch of secure shell traffic. And then suddenly, the person who uses that particular computer joins a particular project that requires them to do a bunch of secure transmissions of data using SSH. Well, now suddenly they're going in and transmitting a bunch of SSH, and that's a change in the conditions in the network, and say, hey, why is this node suddenly sending so much secure shell traffic or so much encrypted traffic? That may cause an anomaly-based system to go in and fire off an event saying, hey, something's wrong. Now, it's a false positive, okay? So there's actually nothing wrong, but it, it identified that something changed. And because networks can and do change in terms of the types of flow of data and things that are going across them, um, anomaly-based systems are more prone to these, these false errors or these false positives um, than knowledge-based systems would be. So that's your best answer for this particular choice. But let's keep looking at the other ones just to be thorough in terms of talking everything through. Third option says that they're limited to detecting signatures of known attacks. Nope, that's knowledge-based. That's straight up knowledge-based stuff. And anomaly-based is good because it can detect things that aren't 
necessarily known attacks. Knowledge-based systems have to have signatures, and those signatures um, tell you this is evidence of a particular type of attack, but it can only detect it if the signatures exist. So you got to have those signatures, uh, one, to be known, and two, to be installed on your IDS. Then the last option on the list is the changes in network traffic patterns tend to go unnoticed. Uh, no, quite the opposite. Changes in traffic patterns on the network actually are quite noticed by anomaly-based systems. So um, it makes them, very, again, very prone to uh, false positives in your network. All right, sweet. Two more questions down. Appreciate you being here. If you want to get these questions every single day, make sure you subscribe so you get that notice. I think there's also like a little button you can check so you get a notification every time there's a new uh, link posted up. And um, if you like this video and you like these questions, please click on the like button so I know that. I'll appreciate that too. Talk to you tomorrow.